Like most players, I thought decoys were almost pointless. When I saw someone break a lantern over a kennel with one, my curiosity was piqued. Did you just break that with a decoy? Oh, I didn't know you could yeah. do that. What else am I missing? A lot. I was missing a lot. This is what I knew about decoys, and this is what I found. Did you know you can use them to ignite oil spills or break green barrels? Decoys have a wide range of uses, many of which I haven't seen discussed anywhere. Well, now they're here in this comprehensive guide to decoys. I've actually made an infograph summarizing all the details in this video. If you want it, I've posted it in the Hunt Lab Discord, link in the description. Let's get into it. What are decoys? Well, there are two kinds of decoys, normal decoys and blank fire decoys. They're tools that let you deceive enemy hunters. Normal ones just make the sound of a footprint wherever you throw it. And blank fire ones make the sound of a gunshot. But you can leverage these to deceive enemy hunters, manipulate AI, and interact or break various things in the world, like explosive barrels or barred doors. Normal decoys are going to have 12 uses and you can throw them up to 27 meters in an arc. Their main uses are imitating footstep sounds when thrown and breaking world objects, like green barrels or lanterns. Blank fire decoys have six uses, and they fly in a 19 meter arc. On impact, they make a gunshot noise and ignite certain objects, like oil or explosive barrels. Anything that a normal decoy can break, blanks can do too, just louder. Normal decoys only cost $600, so if you have an open tool slot, there's really no reason not to bring them, because there are quite a few times where they will come in handy. Blank fire decoys are $45. You're gonna find the most benefit from decoys when playing solo than in a group. I've definitely had some use using them in trios and duos, but sometimes I found myself distracted by looking for opportunities to use them rather than supporting my team in the fight. So use at your own discretion. Let's start with sound traps. You know, crows, kennels, and horses. You can alert sound traps with either kind of decoy. Just throw a decoy near it and it'll go off. This can be nice when you're sneaking around a compound and trying to throw off other hunters on where your actual location is. This shifts their attention to the sound trap and also provides good noise cover to cover up your footsteps while you're sneaking. For kennels, you can either just throw it nearby to alert the kennel or hit the lantern on top to destroy the animals. With birds, a nice touch is that you can choose the direction you want them to fly. Just throw the decoy opposite the direction you want them to move, because they're going to fly away from the noise you make. You can use any of these, but I find horses and kennels to be most reliable, because those are the things people more often accidentally trigger while they're sneaking around a compound. Not only can you use decoys for distractions, you can also use it for PvP purposes. This section is where the two decoys differentiate the most. Decoy blanks have special interactions with yellow barrels, red barrels, and oil. When you throw it at oil, it actually ignites it. So keep a lookout for these oil patches. They're all over and they can be used to either block vision, add some covering noise, or block a pathway from a hunter trying to approach you. The red and yellow barrels surprised me. Unlike when you hit them with a bullet, when you land a blank fire decoy on them, they instantly explode. Because you don't make noise when you throw a decoy, no one knows where you are when you set it off. This means they're great to use for noise cover, or if you happen to see someone hiding near one, you can get an easy takedown. Now, the rest of these can be done with either normal decoys or the blank fire ones. Personally, I think the most important discovery I made was that regular decoys will break green barrels, which is nice because the hive swarm that comes out of them has such a massive range. It's a great way to catch someone off guard and start a fight on the right foot. Just make sure you're not too close when you hit it. Lanterns are nice because they're often hiding over a barrel or over an oil patch, so your normal decoys still have an opportunity to light up some of those. Decoys are great options for disarming traps. Not only is it definitely going to get the enemy's attention, but they're not actually going to know where you are, so you might be able to bait them into checking on their trap and then attacking them while they're on their way over. Good luck getting use out of this one, but apparently all fused consumables can be set off by hitting them with a decoy. This applies to things like dynamite, frags, and sticky bombs. You can actually take out hunters with decoys. They do 20 damage when you do a direct hit, but their arc is so slow when you throw them that it's pretty hard to actually make that hit. So I can't say it's a good strategy, but boy is it a great meme. Probably the easiest way to set this up would be to take a sparks pistol with poison ammo 
and after shooting them with the sparks, follow up by lobbing a hail of decoys at them. Let's look at some things in the environment like windows and doors and hanging chains. First of all, you can throw normal decoys on any surface to imitate the sound of a footstep. And you can even cheat this to get two footsteps sound of it if you hit a wall. If you hit the wall, it'll make a noise on the wall and then again when it impacts with the ground. Now if you're going to throw multiple decoys, I'd encourage you not to be too rhythmic about it to try and make it more organic to a sneaking movement. I find this more effective when you have multiple levels that you can throw the decoy on. Let's say you're in Port Rico and you can throw it down in the mud to make people think you're on a level lower than you are. Or another use is you might be able to throw it on the second story of a barn so people think they have someone in their building above them, which might pull some of their attention away from you sneaking around the outside. Beyond this, you can also use decoys to help you infiltrate. You can unlock barred doors. Just aim at the crossbar and the door opens quickly and silently. This can be used when infiltrating compounds. Just find a window to peek through and throw the decoy at the bar from the window. Many people know you can shoot these, but shooting makes noise and decoys don't. And when you're trying to stealth around, well, obviously less noise is better. Now, when sieging a compound, you can use decoys to break out windows. The two best applications for this would be increasing the visibility into the building without giving away your location, or creating more breaching opportunities. Because now, especially if you have Lightfoot, you can jump in a window without detection, rather than breaking the glass as you go in. You know those big heavy metal gates that block the entrances to some compounds? Well, if one is open, you can hit it with decoy and it'll slam shut. If you're not a fan of music, I got good news for you. The gramophones and pianos, if they're set to be playing, you can shut them off by hitting them with the decoy. Unlike that, the metal doors that you crank open, normally you can shoot the handle to have them closed, and I was really hoping decoys would let you do that too. Unfortunately, that is not the case. The last discovery I found in this area was actually light bulbs, the ones that turn on when you have a generator on. If you're on a night map and there's too much light in the compound while you're trying to move around, you can use the decoys to take out the light bulbs and reduce the light in the area. This could help you get away with movement you might not otherwise make. Most of the other objects in this category just aren't even worth bothering with. Decoys don't make meaningful sounds when you use them on hanging chains or cans or glass on the floor. And when you throw them at a stick, the stick doesn't even break. Those sticks are more durable than the beams blocking the doors. Alright, on to monsters. You can use decoys to distract or direct AI monsters. If you throw one near a monster, it'll go into an alert state and start looking around the area. Furthermore, if you hit one, it'll go into an aggressive state and broaden its search area in a faster pattern. This is useful if there are other hunters trying to sneak around. The monster could potentially snuff them out and force them to either deal with it and make noise, or have to run and reposition. This is a pretty niche use, but it's there. The ones that are most helpful to do this with would be immolators and hives, mainly because after they've been agitated, their aggro ranges are so big, they can be used to guard a section of the compound until someone chooses to take them out. Uh, another good use case is actually water devils. If there was one blocking a crossing, you can throw a decoy in the water and it'll swim to it, giving you and your allies a moment to cross without taking damage or having to kill it. If you're someone who just likes making a mess, then this one's for you. You can use decoys to interact with world objects, like all the ones you see scattered around on Quick Play. You can also knock the guns out of saddlebags. Completely useless, but chaotic. There are four traits that interact with decoys. Decoy Supply, Pitcher, Frontiersman, and Whispersmith. Decoy Supply is almost a necessity. When you have it, whenever you take ammo from the ammo supply boxes, you'll also get a resupply on your decoys. Take note that this won't happen when taking ammo from special ammo boxes. And if your ammo is full but your decoys aren't, you can't open the ammo supply box, so you'll have to let off a round first. Pitcher increases the throw range of your decoys. This gives you more opportunity to throw a decoy in an advantageous location. The range of your normal decoys improve from 27 to 40 meters, and blank decoys from 19 to 24. I won't take Pitcher just for this, but... It's already pretty good with your consumables, so it definitely gives you another reason to consider it. Now, Frontiersmen is something you should probably pass on if you're getting it for the decoys. It gives you one extra decoy for each kind. Because you already get so many decoys with each tool, this is a very minor benefit. I'd say skip it. Then the last trait is Whispersmith. While this doesn't directly impact your decoys, it does reduce the noise you make when swapping items. So if you are switching between the decoys and a gun in a stealthy situation, you're going to make less noise in that process. 
Did I miss something about decoys? Or what's your favorite way to use them? Let me know in the comments.